Josh was the uh, pitcher. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nikki, and this is Chandler. Um, so, for those who don't know, um, I have a four-year-old. And that. Okay, she's nine. She's nine. I have a nine-year-old, and I'm really excited about this pattern because uh, we have one for kids. Um, so yes, my new Nomi two zero seven zero. How do you like it? You like it? Yeah. Do you love it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this pattern, I don't know the sizes. Oh, it starts from kids size seven, ten. And it's 8 and 12 and 14 for kids. And for adults, it's for, it's up to size 18. But I absolutely love this pattern. Um, I love a trench coat. Who doesn't love a trench coat? Absolutely love it. Um, you like it too, right? Yeah. What do you think you could wear it with besides stretch pants? Jeans. Jeans. This is true. This is true. And it's really comfortable, too. And it's just, like, really cool. I, I wear mine with, like, sneakers and stretch pants and the whole thing. Like, I love it. Even the one that I did, I'm doing in the tutorial. Love that one, too. The fabric, amazing. But anyway, so we're going to... I should probably spit my gum out. Sorry about that. I should start over, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> She's mortified right now. Okay, so um, again, this is ME2070. And not gonna lie, there's quite a few pieces to this, um, but I think it's pretty easy. I think it's a pretty self-explanatory. So um, for things that are a bit confusing, I, hopefully I um, kind of explain them well. There's a few times where I mentioned throughout the video where um, there's a different place to get this tutorial. Um, I have it on my personal YouTube um, channel as well, and I'll send you or put a link in there for that as well. But there's a few things that you'll need. You will need a belt buckle. Uh, you will need, of course, the fabric. You'll need about 11 or 12 buttons. It's quite a few buttons, of course, because it's a trench coat. And what I love most about this coat is that it's long. Like, we see many a trench coats, and they're just the average size or the average length. This is like a really long trench coat, and it's, I just love it. And the collar, it's big, and it's oversized, and it just looks really luxe. Um, so, yeah. So, what else do we need? Of course, the fabric. You want a really good trench coat fabric. Um, for the sample, I used I know it's over there. I used um, this fabric from Mood, which is a um, what is it? I'll I'll try to remember the oh, it's a Balenciaga uh, cotton. It's really good. It's really thick. It just feels very nice. Now, the one that I did for the tutorial, I got that one at Fabric Mart, and it's a good one. It's a really good one, and it was on sale for, I think, like maybe $3 a yard. I bought the entire bolt. Um, so, yes, you're going to see lots of that. But anyway, uh, we're going to get started with the tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, any concerns, I hope you like it. I hope you love it as much as I do, and I'm excited that Chandler gets to have well, she's had patterns before, but under McCall. So this is her first Nomi pattern. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we have all the pieces cut out and we have them marked. Now what we wanna do is we want to, and we're starting with the uh, front piece, which is, well, it's just the, the front piece. There's two front pieces. So we want to first start by reinforcing the corners. And it's really important, I know I say this all the time, but it's really important that, um, it's really important that we have all the markings included with this pattern. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to reinforce the corners in each piece. So these corners right here. So typically when you're reinforcing the corner, you're going to reinforce the corner and then you're going to clip to the corner. 
but I don't clip into my corner until kind of like the last minute um, because there's been instances where I clipped and I didn't really need to clip or I clipped too far. Um, so we're just going to reinforce the corner, but if you're comfortable with clipping in it, go ahead, but I'm going to go ahead and wait. So once we do that, the next step is we're going to do the welt pockets. So I'm not going to take you step by step through the welt pocket, but I will include here um, a link to a step by step welt pocket, um, which is the same welt pocket that we're using here for this pattern. I have another welt pocket tutorial. It's really quick and easy. I think I did it in a way that's easy to follow. And it's the exact same welt pocket. We're just, the dimensions are gonna be different. So I'm gonna link that welt pocket tutorial and it's the same way Then we'll go ahead and do the pockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to reinforce the corner and then do the welt pockets. Be right back. Okay, so I do want to make note of something. Um, if you plan to follow the instructions uh, from the actual pattern for the welt pocket, I promise you, you will walk away thoroughly confused because it doesn't go into the detail that you needed to go into um, to actually complete the pocket. Now, if you already know how to make welt pockets, um, then fine, you know, this is like whatever. But I would 100% um, recommend you follow my welt pocket tutorial. It's quick, it's easy, uh, but a couple of changes. So you follow the instructions the way they are and you, you, know, you go ahead and insert the welt in. And then what you need to do, because the instructions are based off of one piece of fabric that basically is the bag that you're going to, and I'm just using this as an example. So we'll go ahead and put this over. So it'll be technically you, one piece of fabric, and it's gonna be the same um, shape. It's not gonna be like the shape of a pocket. It's gonna be like maybe a square. Um, and it's going to be pretty much you connecting this in to this seam allowance and then turning this up and doing connecting this other end to the other seam allowance and then just kind of like stitching the sides up really quick really easy cut and dry but this particular pattern now you can still do that if you want to just like throw these out the window and just cut your own you can do that or if you're going to uh, do the actual uh, use the actual pieces of the pattern that came with it I'm going to show you what you should do to make it really easy so this is the right side of the fabric. What you want to do is go ahead and just kind of flip this over so that this little seam here is exposed. You want to take this with right sides together. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this tape because it is so much easier. And then with right sides together, you want to just go ahead and place this. So I'm going to do the other side as well. Just kind of pull this seam allowance out a bit. And you can go ahead and either pin it or tape it. And then go ahead and tape this. Oh, 
uma coisa. Okay, then stitch along this edge and then stitch along this edge. And then what you're gonna do is turn it. Well, you know what, I'll go ahead, just so that it won't confuse you. Um, I'll go ahead and stitch these and then be right back. Okay, so we have both of them uh, stitched in. Now what, now what you wanna do is go ahead and turn these to the inside. these over now what you want to do is you want to stitch these two together making sure you stitch all the way up here and including these little tabs that we cut before stitch all the way around and then go ahead and press and when you press you want to press down in this direction Okay, so we have the pocket stitched. Now what you wanna do is on the very edge here, you want to stitch and reinforce the stitch in each corner. Okay, so we have the pockets um, finished. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take piece number six and I believe this is seven, yeah, piece number six and seven, um, which is going to be like this, some people call it like the armor. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and work on this. And again, make sure you already have your markings. We'll go ahead and set this over. All right, and turn this uh, right side up. And we're going to turn this with the right sides uh, matching. And I just went ahead and um, put bias tape around the, the side that's going to, it's not gonna be exposed, but it'll be under. So if, for whatever reason, if it like flaps up, you won't see like some raw edge. But anyway, it's not necessary. You, nine times out of 10, you'll never be able to see it. So let's go ahead and pin these. Let me grab my pins. All right, we're gonna pin these and then we're gonna go ahead and stitch. All right, then we're gonna stitch um, and then you're going to turn this right side out and press. Okay, so we have this part finished. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and connect it to the um, front right side or front left, whichever, whichever you want. So we're gonna go ahead and then we're gonna pin this. And then using a basting stitch, we're going to stitch around here, here, and here. Okay, so we have this connected. Now what we want to do is go ahead and work on the belt loops. So what you want to do is with right sides together, fold them over, and then you want to kind of crease this with your fingers. And depending on what type of fabric you have, you may need to just actually use the um, iron and press them. But this fabric presses pretty well.
Okay, so what this has done is kind of create the crease in the middle. So now what you want to do is after you have that crease and you can see this crease, just kind of fold this over and you're going to press this. Go all the way down and press it. Then you want to do the exact same thing with the other side. So these two meet up. Do that um, for the entire strip. Okay, so we have both sides folded in and pressed. Now what we want to do is fold it one more time. And then press. So after you do that, you want to do a very thin stitch on this side, as close to the edge as you can get, as well as a stitch on the opposite side. You wanna do that all the way down. Okay, so we have the carriers um, finished. Now what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and cut the carriers. So you want to cut uh, four, is it four inch? One, two, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's, you wanna cut four, four inch carriers. One, two, three, four. I'm short. Okay. And then you want to cut uh, two, five and a quarter. Let's see how long this is. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, that's interesting. You're supposed to cut, it says five and a quarter, uh, but there's only 10 inches left and I cut them exact. Hmm. Okay, so just go ahead and We're gonna cut just five inches. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work, we'll just go back and cut um, a new carrier. Someone was detected at the front door. Okay. So now we'll set these to the side, but we're gonna take one of the five inch carriers. And so on the actual pattern, there is next to this marking right here, there is a marking. So just make sure you have that one noted. Go ahead, let me grab my pins. Go ahead, you're gonna pin this, and then you're gonna stitch. So the way you're gonna stitch is, you're going to stitch with this folded up, and just stitch over this line, the stitching line that you already have. You're just gonna do it to the side that has the, the placket on. Okay, so we have this carrier connected. Now what we want to do is move to the back pieces, which are pieces number 12. So we want to go ahead and put right sides together. We want to stitch the back, making sure you match up the notches. Okay, so once you get down to this part here, all right, we wanna match them up perfectly. Okay. 
Okay, so once you get here, you're going to stitch down using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you get here, you want to reinforce this area right here, and then you're going to clip into it. So when I am working on the neck and the collar, I don't typically clip into it, but I will do it here. So we're going to go ahead and clip into that and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so I have, no, get down, get down. I have the back stitched and it's pressed and also clipped. Now what we want to do is take like the back placket. I don't even know what this thing is called, but it's the piece that's going to go over the back. Um, so what we want to do first is... We want to, this is the wrong side, this is the right side. We are going to fold this over 5 eighths of an inch. We're gonna press it, and then we're going to fold over the top. And then fold it over again. So all the way down 5 eighths of an inch. Once you do that, you're gonna come back over and you're gonna take this raw edge fold it under, just kind of like tuck it under here. So it's going to create a really thin uh, and narrow hem. So then once you do that, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna stitch. You wanna stitch this. Hey, 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 no, no, no. All right, and then press down. Okay, so we have the bottom here um, stitched. And now what we want to do is working still on the right side of the fabric. We want to go ahead, we want to fold this and find the center. And then just kind of like reinforce so that you can see this on the right side of the fabric. Flip this over. You want to take the one side and meet it up to the center and then pin. And you want to do the same thing to the other side. and meet it up here to the center. And then pin. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and stitch this section right here. Okay, so we have this section finished. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and take the back. And we want to place place this on the back. Someone was detected at the front door. And pin. Making sure you match the notches with the notches. And then you want to base stitch here all the way around around the neck and down the side. Okay, so we have the back attached. Now what you wanna do is connect the front to the back at the shoulders and at the side seams. So with right sides together, Oh, this is thick. Oh, let's just 
these. All right, so we're going to stitch here, here, and down the sides. And once you do that, then go ahead and press your seam allowance open. Okay, so while I'm in the process of um, stitching the shoulders and the side seams, I realized we only put in one uh, of the shoulder, uh, what are these carriers? So we want to go ahead and do the other carrier. Let's see, where is it? We want to do the other carrier. So there is, and I also noticed that there is, at least on my version, there's no marking for this additional carrier. The marking is actually on this part, which really won't do you any good. Um, so if you just take the pattern kind of match it up and then you'll see where to add the marking so let's go ahead and just stick the carriers in here and i'm just going to sew the side seams or the shoulder seams along with the carrier together So we definitely want to make sure we add this, um, that we add the other carrier on the shoulder. And I'm going to be honest, like when I, I'm trying and trying to make every effort to go by the instructions, which is a challenge for me because I'm not a big instruction person. Uh, but what I did notice is that by going by the instructions, they don't even mention in the instructions to add the other um, carrier. So I'm just going to scrap the instructions and just go off of how I know to make it. So go ahead and add the, or, uh, stitch these using a five, eight, seven inch seam allowance, as well as the sides. And then we'll go ahead and press those open. Okay. So we have the sides, um, and the shoulders attached. Now what we want to do is put the carriers on the sides. So they should already be marked. Let me cut this off. Should already be marked. So what you want to do is find where they are marked. And I'll just stick a little pin through each one. And then just take a little piece of chalk just so that it marks where I want to place them. All right, then we want to take one end and we're going to place it right here. I'm going to go ahead and use the double-sided tape, which to me in situations like this, it just works so much better. This might be too much. I'm going to need a very little. I'll do the other side. I'm going to go ahead and peel this off. Maybe we'll keep that on for now. So we want to go ahead and place this. All right, so now what we want to do is go ahead and reinforce this stitch right here. And then you want to do the same thing. Take this, or if you have it pinned, that's fine too. You just want to kind of bend over just the ends. And you want to stitch that. Now, when you go to stitch this part, 
it's going to be a little trickier to fit it under your presser foot to get it stitched. Um, or if you want, you can hand stitch it, hand tack it in there as well. But you want to definitely make sure it's reinforced just because, you know, it's the belt and it's going to, it's a belt loop and it's going to get a lot of wear and a lot of pull. So what you want to do is do this for both sides. Okay, so we have the carriers connected. Now what we want to do is take piece number 11, which is the, um, this is the under collar. So we want to take piece number 11 and we want to put these two together. We want to stitch and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the uh, under collar stitched together. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and attach this. So we're gonna work on the wrong side. Attach the notches or uh, match the notches. Where are the notches? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, back seam. Okay, so here is where we reinforce the front when we first started. So what I like to do is after I stitch this, then I'm going to go in and clip this. And that way it will make it lay nicer. And again, don't worry if you feel like it's going to be too, a little too bunchy around this section because when we end up clipping and then pressing, it'll lay nice and flat. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and stitch. You're going to then, after you stitch, you're going to clip to the stitching here and then press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the under collar attached. Now what we want to do is grab the sleeves. We want to, with right sides together, pin the sleeves. And we want to stitch using a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then press the seam open. Okay, so we have the sleeve stitched and the seam allowance pressed. Now what we want to do is 
The same thing we did uh, on the actual coat. We want to take, there's a pen. Let me grab a pen. So we have our markings that are, of course, on the inside. We want to just transfer these markings to the, just kind of a little, little mark just so that we know where it is. And using the same process, we're going to turn this right side out and attach the carriers the same way we did on the actual coat. Okay, so we have the carriers added. Now what we wanna do is, so we have these markings here. So we're gonna add the base stitching here and then we're gonna insert into the actual coat. And what you'll need to do is you'll need to fit as you go in with the base basting stitches. So let me go ahead and base stitch these. So you wanna go from here to here, then another set of uh, basting stitches from here to here. Okay, so I have the basting stitches. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and fit these in. And then we're going to take and get this until we can get it nicely fit in here. Okay, so once you have the sleeve set, uh, go ahead and press, and then press the seams toward the sleeve cap. Okay, so we have the sleeve set in, and now what we wanna do is work on the epaulets. So we have the markings, um, and the epaulets are piece number 16. So what we want to do is with right sides together, we're going to pin and so we're going to stitch from here over 
and from here over. And we want to leave a space open so that we'll be able to turn um, once we stitch. So after you stitch, go ahead and clip the ends, turn it right side out, and then press. Okay, so we have the epaulets uh, turned over. And so we have this little opening here. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to, around the edges, all the way around, we're going to do a stitch. And you're gonna go as close to the edge without going over the edge. You're gonna do that on both. Okay, so we have the epaulets top stitched. Now what we wanna do is take out a measuring gauge and you want to measure from the neck here over an inch and a half. And just like mark it or stick a pin in there. Uh, right here. And then you wanna take the epaulette, slide it in And then you want it to stop where this marking is. And then go ahead and pin this. So then what you want to do is This portion that's left here, you want to stitch this and you want to stitch it right at the top, right where the sleeve and the shoulder meet. So pretty much within this little seam right here. So you want to just kind of reinforce the stitch, stitch it right here. You want to do that on both sides. Okay, so we have the epaulette stitched on. Now we're just going to fold this over. We can pin it. And this is where we're going to put the button. So we're going to wait um, until a little later to add the buttons. I'm going to do it all at one time, but we'll just kind of position it here. Um, if the markings, if you transferred it over, mine is right here. This is where we'll put the, so this is for the button hole and the button. I mean, but how often are you going to like take the button or unbutton this? So you could do kind of like a faux button hole um, and just put a button or you can go ahead and do the button hole and the button. It's completely your choice. I am going to do, I think on the original, I, put, I did the button hole and the button and also I did my, on the sample, on the original, I did my um, epaulets different. So I am going to do kind of like a supplement to this and show you how I did that because I like the idea of the actual carrier shown on the outside. I don't know, for some reason, I just think it looks a little better. Um, so I will show you how I did that. And to be completely honest, it's a little easier than doing it this way. Um, but I kind of wanted to follow it and this is kind of like the traditional way to do it but um, I will do a supplement to that and show you and it's quick and easy how I did that one um, so let's go ahead and we're going to move over to the the uh, bands around the sleeves okay so I just realized I don't think you can even see on the pattern um, and the pattern cover how I did my epaulets on the original um, and so this is this is not like tr the traditional way to do it but this is how I did it I I prefer this because I like for this part to show but you know it's definitely a personal preference um, so I will show you how to do that as well okay so for the arm um, the the sleeve tabs what we're going to do is, with right sides together, the faced and the unfaced, we're going to put these together. And 
Okay, so I'm gonna put these together and we're going to stitch all the way around, but you're going to leave this side open, this side open. So once you stitch, I want you to go ahead and um, trim the seams and then clip the clip the ends and then turn right side out. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so we have the sleeve tabs uh, turned right side out. Now we're gonna go ahead and press them. After you press them, go ahead and top stitch all the way around. With the exception of the ends, we're still gonna leave the ends open, but top stitch all the way around on both sides. Okay, so we have the uh, sleeve tabs top stitched. Now what you want to do is grab the coat. So on the inside, you've already made the markings. So just so that you can reposition the marking, just kind of like stick a couple pins in here and transfer it on to the front side. Or you can just leave the pins in just to use it as a guide. So I'll just quickly do this. And I'm just using a regular piece of like school chalk um, because it comes right off super easy. I don't have to wash it. So what you want to do, so this is the back of the coat and this is the front. You're going to take this raw edge You're gonna place it here. So here are the X's. I can see mine through my fabric, but you may need to kind of transfer that over as well. But I can see where I put my markings. So you're gonna place it here. So uh, at this point, we're going to stitch close to the edge. And then once you stitch, we're going to then trim so that it's like pretty much nothing left. Now, what I did with the original, I didn't do this. Um, I actually put bias tape on it. Um, so there's a couple options. You can also put a, uh, open this up and slide it through here, which to be completely honest, um, it, would look, it would look a lot better, um, but it will take a lot more time to do. Um, so I will show you how I did mine on a supplemental um, tutorial. But for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and show you how it is done according to the instructions. Um, so let's go ahead and we're going to stitch across here and then we'll go ahead and trim. Okay, so we have the uh, sleeve tab attached. Now what you want to do is you want to trim and you want to trim this as close as you can get. Just make sure you don't nick the actual fabric. So now what you want to do, so keep in mind, and I'm going to do this a little further, um, you want to make sure that when you put this on, that you're going in the direction toward the back. I hope that makes sense. And I'll tell you why in a second. I don't want to cut this because then I'll have to do a whole nother story. Okay. 
So now what you want to do is you want to flip this over and you want to press. You want to press it in this direction. And then here's the loop on this end. You're going to feed it through the loop and then it'll come out on this side. So go ahead and press and do this to both sides. Okay, so we have this pressed um, and through the loop. Now we're just going to, now I'm just going to kind of put this in there. We're gonna do the um, buttons um, a little later and the button holes. But now we're gonna work on the front lining and front facing, which are pieces number, what is this? 12 and 17, I believe. I believe it's 12 and 17. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to reinforce this corner. Again, we're not gonna clip into it until a bit later, but um, let's reinforce the corner on both sides which already should be marked. Okay, so we have the front facing corner reinforced. Now what we wanna do is go ahead and attach the front lining to the front facing. So we're gonna pin these. <coughs> So once we pin this, we want to pin it all the way down. And then we want to press the lining or press the um, seam allowance toward the lining. So toward this way. And we want to do that for both sides. Okay, so we have the facing and the front lining um, attached and pressed. Now we'll move on to the back. Okay, so the back is a little different than most backs. Um, there's two pieces. There's a right and a left as opposed to just like one, um, one back. Or a, one back with two different pieces that you just have to put together because of the break that's in the back. So what we'll do, and just make sure that you have this properly noted with the right and the left. It's really important because once you put it together and you attach the lining to the body, um, that they match up properly. Okay, so what we want to do first is duh, 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 duh. we want to reinforce the brakes right here. So you want to reinforce both of these and then go ahead and stitch these two together making sure you stop put it together lining up the notches going down and making sure you you're stopping right here once you do that, go ahead and press the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the back lining left and right um, connected. Now what we want to do is go ahead and stay stitch the neck. So you want to stay, stay stitch the neck. And then once you do that, we're going to create this uh, little pleat here. To make the pleat, you're going to stitch from the upper edge right here to the small dot and then you're going to open the pleat and you're going to open it toward the right okay so we have the back lining um, stitched and in place now what we want to do is get the back facing which is piece number 13. so before we do anything let's go ahead and stay stitch the uh, back facing. Once you stay stitch, go ahead and attach 
the facing to uh, the back lining and making sure you match up these notches. Okay, so we have the back facing connected. Now what we wanna do is we want to attach the front facing and lining to the back with right sides together. So we want to do this the same way we did the front and back of the actual fabric. So once you do that, um, and you want to connect this by the shoulders as well as the side seams, and then you want to insert the sleeves the exact same way you did for the actual fabric. So stitch up the side seams for the sleeves and insert them. Okay, so we have the uh, front lining and facing connected to the back as well as the sleeves. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the upper collar. Making sure you match the notches and the markings. Okay, now go ahead and stitch, clip if necessary, and where necessary, and then go ahead and uh, iron the seam allowance open. Okay, so we have the upper collar attached and we have it nicely pressed. Now what we wanna do is take the lining and facing and connect it to the coat. want to make sure we are lining up the notches. do this at the collar as well as the front here. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and stitch. We're gonna stitch all the way down, both sides, as well as stitching the collar. Okay, so we have the um, coat and the lining connected. Now what you wanna do is go ahead and press it really well and then top stitch. And so you're gonna to top stitch once you press it 
um, all the way around here and then all the way down the front as well. Okay, so we have everything top stitched. Now what you wanna do is work on the vent here in the back. Okay, so you're only going to be working on the vent at this point. So it should look like this. Um, so essentially what you wanna do is kind of open this up You want to pin this. Right where it is marked. And then just follow it all the way down. Continue to go all the way down. Matching up the notches. Continue down. All right. So when you get all the way down, this is how it's going to look. In this spot here. So it's not going to make it all the way down. The lining is going to be a bit shorter. So you want to do this and then do, pin the other side and then go ahead and stitch and then press. And you're going to press it with the uh, seam allowance going toward the lining. Okay, so we have this connected and pressed. Now what you want to do is turn this over. And as you can see, this is kind of loose. And this one is like more stationary. So we're going to flip this over. do is make sure this is completely flat and the lining is flat okay 
Okay, so this side is where the piece that flapped over was. So we want to, I'm just gonna kind of mark this. And now what you wanna do is stitch, secure the stitch right here and then stitch here and secure the stitch here. So you kind of want to fill for it and that way you'll know where it is. And you can actually see it as well. Not so much on this fabric, but I can I can still see it. So it starts here. You want to secure the stitch here and then end it right here. I'm also going to just stick a little pin in here. So you're going to be stitching through all of the fabric from here to here. Okay, so we have um, the back vent tacked. And now what we want to do is go ahead and attach the lining sleeve to the sleeve and I already started the sleeve. All right, so you just want to attach the sleeve. Making sure you match up the seams. Then you want to go ahead and stitch this and once you stitch it then just turn it right side out and then we will press it you want to do that for both sleeves okay so we attached the lining now what you want to do is just go ahead and press you want to press it really nicely on both sleeves Okay, so I've ironed the sleeve and the sleeve lining. Now what you wanna do is, let's see, you wanna go under. I probably should have done this earlier, but it's not a big deal. And we're going to stitch. So we're going here at the collar and we're going to stitch the upper and the under collar so you're going to go in and grab the seam allowances you're gonna put them together and you're just gonna stitch them. And what this does is prevent your collar from shifting.
Okay. And then you want to go ahead and stitch this closed. And once you do that, just go ahead and give it one really good press. Okay, so we have the collar pressed out and tacked. And now what we wanna do is go ahead and you're gonna to need to transfer your button hole and your button placement your button placements on probably all of it actually because I pretty much have they broke off but you're gonna go ahead and transfer them over and then go ahead and once you do that put in your buttons and your button holes Okay, so we have all the buttons and the buttonholes completed. Um, I just haven't opened mine up yet. So now we're gonna go ahead and finish the hem. Now, again, I finish my hem different because I like it open. I don't like to do the baggy, but you can finish it however you want. Um, I typically just go in and I'm going to serge the ends and then turn them under an inch and you want to do that all the way around even once you get over here where the slit is you're going to do the same thing turn it under um, and then do a blind hem stitch uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll be right back Okay, so we have the hem finished. Now what we wanna do is the last piece, which is the belt. So this is piece number 20, and there's two pieces to them. So we're gonna put the right sides together, and we're going to stitch all the way around. But when you get to this mid part here, you wanna leave about two inches or so open so that you can turn it right side out. So after you stitch, you wanna go ahead and you wanna clip the ends and then turn right side out. Okay, so we have this turned right side out. Now what you wanna do is take the opening here and you wanna turn it under And you just want to make sure it's even. Then you want to press it and then top stitch all the way around. Okay, so we have the belt um, top stitched. Now what we want to do is go ahead and grab your belt buckle. So the buckle that I'm using is probably, I don't know, maybe a quarter, uh, a, a, a quarter of an inch um, to, I don't know, I think it's a, maybe a quarter of an inch too small, maybe a bit less than that. But I really wanna use this belt buckle, so I'm going to make this work. So you can transfer your markings over from the pattern. Um, mine kind of bled through, so I just kind of like highlighted it a bit. And we'll go ahead and do the belt buckle. So we're going to squeeze this in. So it's not too far off. And once we do that, we'll go ahead, clamp this. We're going to stitch along the stitching line. And that's it. So I hope this was easy enough to follow. I know there was a lot of steps involved. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to let me know. Happy sewing.